North Carolina. And um, I guess uh, we say that we focus on Black Southern filmmaking. And for us, what that means is that uh, we're trying to develop not only uh, here in North Carolina, but also across the South. Um, my background has been in documentary filmmaking, uh, but also in narrative. I'm a, I'm a screenwriter. And so uh, the, the, one of the things that I've seen, most of my career has been in New York. I should start with that. And I guess, um, you know, after moving here and being able to see how the uh, landscape is and the, and the types of content, I really wanted to have some type of distribution platform for Southern makers so that uh, not only is your work seen, but also you're able to get some training. Uh, there are some conversations that you should be aware of that the distributors are having, not just about Black Southern filmmaking, but just Southern filmmaking in general. And so uh, based on that feedback, um, there's just some, some uh, tweaks that we need to do to the content that we're creating in order to make content that uh, will be programmed content that will be bought and, and sold so that you can have a sustainable career. So um, the Hey Thai Film Festival has been around for uh, 23, which is our next festival. That will be our 28th year. And I've been on board uh, since 2018. So um, lots to share. I could go on and on about it, but um, we will get into it as we as we go along tonight. But it's good to see all y'all here. And hello, Adam, who has worked with me many times on the festival. Good, good. And, and when is your next festival? The next festival is March 6th through 11th in 2023. So submissions open August 1st. August 1st. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brandon, go ahead. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? I hope everything is well. My name is Brandon Hickman. Uh, I am the lead programmer for the North Carolina Black Film Festival here in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, the, the North Carolina Black Film Festival started off 18 years ago as Cine Noir, uh, Cinema of Black Film. So we changed our name to North Carolina Black Film Festival in, I think, 2004. And our, our main purpose is to bring film uh, to our area that you would not, not normally see. And also to give directors uh, a chance to, I guess, sharpen their knives and test their film out with audiences inside of our community. Uh, we are the original Hollywood East. Uh, and of course we're home with screen gems and some other things. And I always tell the story, which we are very fond of. There's other folks that have come through. And, but about 10 years ago, there was a young lady who bought a film uh, and we gave her Emerging Filmmaker of the Year. And 10 years later, she's Ava DuVernay. So those type of quality of film that we were receiving, that we wanna to continue to do that and not just do that for Wilmington and the North Carolina Black Film Festival, but we wanna do that for the Haytai Festival and we wanna do that for the Charlotte Black Film Festival. We wanna really, really hammer down and make it a, a, an amazing circuit to go through North Carolina. If you go through North Carolina on that circuit, then your film is ready to go cinematic. So I'm excited and honored to be here. Good, awesome, awesome. Just a little about me. Uh, I moved to Charlotte in 09. Um, I'm a technology guy that transitioned into media in 2000. So doing both. Um, I, I got my first video job December, the 30 days after being here. And I'm video recording the Black Expo at Johnson C. Smith University. This guy was doing a presentation about the five economic growth areas in the region. He talked about banking, we're a banking town. He talked about uh, uh, technology, some other things with technology. And then he said film. He said film had the potential to be bigger than NASCAR, the Panthers, and at that time, the Bobcats all put together. Now, I came here for film and I'm shooting this thing and you can imagine my mouth just drops wide open. And also I knew God confirmed my decision to move here when I saw that. 
So I immediately went to my computer to find out what's happening in the space for African-Americans. If this is gonna happen, this is an economic train that's gonna come through here. And in my time being probably a little older than all you guys, I've seen economic trains from different industries come through a city and we get the caboose side of the economic distribution and we find ourselves fighting for fumes. You hear me? And so I saw this and I said, you know what? I'm gonna make it a point that to be in the engine side of this train, if not driving the train, to be involved with economic development in terms of film. And so we say we're economic development organization that uses film as its platform. And that's how I didn't come here to do a festival. You know, something I think that God just gave to me after seeing that, I wanted to make a difference. Nothing was happening in Charlotte in the space and the Charlotte Black Film Festival was birthed. So doing that, and then a year after I started the collective because many people were coming to me about for advice. How do I do this? How to do this? Well, if we have a collective, then we can collectively work together to produce film. We brought in different workshop presenters. We've done filmmakers boot camp. Uh, so variety of different things on the weekends to equip us. So if that train comes through, there's no excuse. And I think that's what Lena's talking about. We don't, we don't need to have an excuse if it comes through, we need to be ready. Uh, so in doing that, I'm president of the board chair of my public access TV station here. And, and, and for last year, I was on the panel with uh, uh, the National Endowment for the Arts. And I was helped responsible for giving away grants to media art individuals and organizations. Uh, almost, it's about 20 something million dollars that we were involved with of doing that. So someone mentioned about money. So there's opportunity for, for filmmakers, for collectives through that arm as well. Uh, I'm on the regional thing called the, uh, the arts, um, media arts, which is a regional piece that's happening. I'm an original member part of that. So, so just super excited you guys to come uh, and super excited about this collaborative that is happening as well. Uh, and one of the things why I wanted to do this because as a filmmaker and also a programmer, as the founder of the Charlotte Black Film Festival, we see submissions coming to in our door left and right. And we see the ones that we're, we gravitate to and those that we maybe, we pass by. And so we wanted to share the information with you uh, in terms of that. And so for, and I, I'm gonna have Brandon and, and, and Lena talk about this too. Last year, because of COVID, uh, we screened 100 films virtually. And we were only, able to do that because I'm a technology guy and I created a Netflix style platform for our festival, right? I didn't go to a third party because you guys know the expense of the third party. And sometimes you don't know because on the back end you got to pay other things. And so we created our own platform and I'm, I'm, I'm super excited that we were selected as the 2021 best virtual event in all of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County. And we probably the only uh, African-American company on that list. So super excited about that. But but so this year we're going to do 100 again, 50 in person, 50 online, right? Because now we have that, it's not going anywhere. So Brandon, Lena, talk about your number of submissions that you guys look for in terms of uh, programming. Ms. Lane. Well, um... We don't uh, look for a number of, of submissions. We just look for quality work. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would say that our acceptance rate is probably about 50% of, of what comes in. Uh, we, we, are, we are able to program. And within the context of the entire program, uh, it's 50% uh, through Film Freeway and 50% curated. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, you know, I talked about how uh, distributors are having a conversation about the types of material that they're seeing come through. Um, there's, um, there's an opportunity for kind of the elevation of craft here in the state. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the things that we do at Haytai, hey which is unique, is that if, if folks submit and we have, let me back up a little bit and talk about the different categories. We have different categories of film and they are uh, Southern narrative shorts, Southern documentary shorts, narrative shorts, documentary shorts, feature length films, documentary feature films, and then works in progress. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, bifurcate the Southern versus general market films. And we do that because, you know, we, we weight a little bit more heavily if it's considered a Southern film, if the maker is from the South, 
or and or uh, there are themes that are Southern, then uh, we'll weight that a little bit more heavily. Mm. And so uh, there's also a, a work in progress program that we do for a documentary film in conjunction with working films. And so you get um, kind of um, expert industry advice on a documentary film in progress. We usually take two per year. Um, and we'll have, you know, uh, mentors like Natalie Bullock Brown and Byron Hurt to kind of work with not only working films, but also uh, the Haiti Heritage Film Festival staff in getting feedback about the work in progress. And it's usually over three days. Oh. So not only are you kind of in conversation with these industry experts, but also you have an audience of experts who are then going to screen your material and give you feedback. Um, so in general, I won't, I'll stop there because I'm going on too long. Uh, 50% is the, is, is what it usually ends up being in terms of what we accept from film freeway. And then the other 50% I'm curating. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. Awesome. Brandon. Um, as far as submissions, so like, um, if they know we don't have a set number that we okay we're going to stop here at submissions we open when we open up our film submissions we just say we get a bunch of them then we we start uh sifting through i think to to look for the most qualitative uh situation most qualitative film because you never know you might find uh, a gem um yes. i think about 20 percent of that is uh finding or, or curating i think for us um the film way film freeway is our friend now seems like uh, but 20% is curating because you might want an amazing opener and closer because as, as, as a programmer, I think about building audiences. And so my opener, I want to be something that's going to, to draw attention to inside our community. We want them to come, whether it's a doc or a feature or a short mm -hmm. or something that we need, really need to watch. Um, and then the closer should be something that culminates the entire, um, the entire festival. So Sometimes we have to go and curate. We have to go and go out and look for those films uh, and that makes sense inside whatever the theme is for the year. So uh, that being said, when you submit, um, just make sure you know it's the best quality and make sure you sit submit in that in that time frame. That's the best. That's the best part when you're on Film Freeway and you're looking. It's going to give you that date from this date to this date. This is submissions, and then of course I'm quite sure everyone knows there's. There's an early registration, there's a regular re registration, and there's a oops, I forgot the late registration. So that's always important to make sure you know those dates of any of the film festivals that you, you know, you've applied to or you submitted to. And um, that's pretty, I, I didn't say this before, our, our film festival is March 25th through the 27th. And this will be our first time, um, like I was telling uh, Ms. Lena, that we will be back in person because um, we were actually on a third party a platform and we know that that is expensive mr thomas yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. so so uh we're going to do the same thing we're actually going to put um a lot of our narrative our doc shorts on there and our, our our categories are shorts uh short docs full feature docs uh and add a feature film and animation awesome awesome and you guys had also before COVID. Uh, you guys had a hurricane. Yes. So really, we should be on year twenty. So about two years. We, you know, we're missing two years. But we had a hurricane twice, actually, and then, and then COVID. So we should be on year twenty. But we're we're on the eighteenth annual that we actually did the festival itself. Um, so we're excited about being face to face. Um, I actually reached out to some filmmakers and asked them, "Would you come?" You know, just sparing, like, would you come to the film festival? Would you? And they were like, yeah, they, they so tired of being in the house and they're so right. tired of looking like we look right now, celebrity squares, that they want to come out. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully they ma they'll mask up and, and be in the space. But we're excited. But I'm going to be very honest with you and very transparent uh, to my friends on here in my North Carolina. I guess I'm, I'm making up a name, the North Carolina Film Festival Collective, uh, Black Film Festival Collective. Uh, uh, it, it has been tough and it's almost like rebirthing because we haven't been, you know, it's been consistent where we've had folks in front of us and now we got to kind of 
invent this thing again because it looks different. Just like uh, Tommy said, he's going to have 50 online, which well, probably because it did really well. And he's going to have 50 film that he screens in person. Right. Um, so that's where we're at. And, and we're excited about it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and let's talk about how at your festival, what are some of the unique things that happens for, for us? Of course, we have workshops. Uh, we have the opening night. Then we have workshops. We even have, I'm a creative person. So I sit in my, I create things, attach it to a film or to film programming. We have what's called the fashion of film. And the fashion of film is where designers come and they pull a movie out of a hat and they're going to design their collection around that particular film. And it's been an amazing, this will be our third year doing it. Amazing, amazing uh, uh, experience doing that. And then we end our festival with an awards program. I know some festivals do, some don't, called the Red Carpet Vision Awards. So we have a comedian host. So, it, you know, dressed up to the T. And so we just have a real good time. And that's how we end it. Actually, that's, that's not how we end it. We end it Sunday with a prayer breakfast. So we have everybody come in, we just have a prayer breakfast, just thankful for successful festival, you know, we speak that. And then we get a chance to really network with each other and really spend some time and build relationships uh, because the festival is really over, you know, and now we can really do that. So that's kind of how it happens there to Charlotte Black Film Festival. How does it happen with you guys? Like when your festival, what, what happens? Uh, Go ahead, Brandon. Well, so what we usually do, we start off uh, with something called the Cinemixer. It's a chance for filmmakers and um, our audiences to, you know, kind of mix and mingle. We have, you know, hors d'oeuvres and some adult libation. And we start off with that. And that's all, usually our opening film for that night. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wilmington. Um, and then on that Friday, we do a tour uh, of Screen Gems and where some film, some films that were filmed in Wilmington, we do a tour of those spots like Out of Wild, the Out of Wild spot and mm -hmm. uh, uh, some other places in Wilmington that have had films, black films that were filmed right here in Wilmington, as as well as the shows. Everybody loves to see where Matlock comes out of the courthouse, so we show them that, uh, uh, and that's really cool. Uh, we do have a film uh, makers panel that we do. We do a brunch, uh, and filmmakers get to sit around with other filmmakers yeah. and discuss. You know what cameras are you using. Everybody now, you know, if you have independent filmmaker folks are going to the XLR. That they're going, they're using that camera DSLR or whatever. I'm sorry, I might be getting the word wrong. Uh, and they're using that and spitting out films faster uh, and editing faster as well. So we talk about those things. Um, and we, our finale is usually something like, on Tommy, like fashion and film, which you've done that. We've done dance and film when we did a, uh, a tribute to fame. And those folks that did fame, we did a, a, a tribute to. Um, the Inkwell here that was filmed here in Wilmington because they, they, they actually, that was one of the films that employed the most African-American teens at one time in wow. any film. Uh, and so we did a tribute to the Inkwell and actually that was my senior year in high school because I'm actually a, originally from Wilmington, North Carolina and yeah. I actually was a part of that production. Um, so we do that and uh, we've also had something called um, Score It Up where we took uh, it was a tribute to Gene Carlo Esposito, and we gave him the Zenith Award here for the North Carolina Black Film Festival, Big Brother Almighty, and we put together uh, things from Do the Right Thing and School Days, and we called it Score It Up, and we had uh, Frankie Pollock, um, who's a composer, he actually had the band play to some of those uh, real, so That's some awesome. of those films that he's been in. We've done, we call it scored up. I mean, that takes a little bit more time, but we, we try to have fun every year. This year, we don't have anything major. We do have the Cinemixer at the end, and we have uh, a film called Stay Prayed Up. So we're going to have some gospel okay. to end it out on Sunday. So we're going to okay. have a great time. Awesome, awesome. So for, for a hey tie, um, the first three days, uh, we usually begin with the work in progress program, and, and I talked about that already. Um, so the the official launch is on that third day, where we have um, an opening night reception and performances. So the types of performances we'll have we'll have, for example, the NCCU. Uh, vocal jazz ensemble. Mm. Uh, we did a montage of, of images of black films from the year and they sang to that. 
Uh, we've also had their sound machine, their, their uh, drum line perform. Um, and we usually have an opening night film. And then on the back end, we usually have a closing night film. And then after party, we usually have, uh, uh, you know, we're dancing to close out the festival. Uh, but last year, because of COVID, we ended up, uh, we had a live performance with Tank and the Bangas out of New Orleans. Um, really, really dope group. And uh, that, that was great. Um, and programmatically, once again, you know, we do a lot of training and we focus on training. So um, during 2020, uh, that was the last in-person. So that was um, Oba Baba Tunde taught a masterclass on acting. Um, last year, we had uh, panel discussions like uh, the black male image in the South. And so we had Terrence Nance, Charles Burnett, uh, Mark Anthony Neal was the moder moderator, Kevin Wilson Jr., who's from Durham, but was nominated uh, for a live action Oscar for his short, uh, My Cousin Emmett, about Emmett Till. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we also had, it was the, so we also had a panel discussion, uh, Lovecraft Country, meets Black Girl's Guide to Surviving Menopause. So we had Anjanue Ellis in conversation with the woman who runs Black Girl's Guide to Surviving Menopause to talk about the I Am episode of, of Lovecraft Country. Um, so yeah, and we, we, we had a live screenplay reading. And, um, you know, other than that, we, the, another good thing to know about the festival is that we try to once we find kind of through lines about you know what filmmakers are talking about then we will bring in the community so for example one year we just happened to have a lot of uh trans oriented uh films so so films out of the black trans community and so we brought in organizations that uh could aid in the in the q a and the talkbacks and and we've done that for whenever there's a, a black Muslim film or a black dance film. Last year, we had a lot of uh, black dance, that there, there were so many black dance films last year. And we were able to do a lot of programming around that. So it's really important for us to not only just kind of market to kind of black community as a monolith, but then to break it out into specific interest areas. Yeah, that's good, and, and and we do that as well. We so we take a film through our uh, jury process that has good message in terms of uh, that's worthy of a panel discussion, a community discussion, and we bring in local organizations to be part of that conversation. Whether it's trafficking, we you know we've done it on trafficking, uh, we've done it on uh, uh, the, the black male image. So we've done a lot of panel discussions uh, uh, around different topics that are impacting or have impact on the African-American community, which is well. So you guys, so we're just more than just showing films. So film festivals are just so much more than showing films. And it's really an experience, uh, I believe, into the culture via film and the engagement piece, I think, which is really, really major. Um, and so with that being said, let, let's, let's get to the topic of, uh, I have Film Freeway, and I'm gonna share my screen. And, and I'm using, uh, uh, Linza, uh, she asked me, she allowed me to use her film, which she submitted as a sample for this particular discussion. Uh, sometimes we get submissions from Film Freeway and it's almost like a blank canvas. You get a name, an email address, you see their film up there and that's it. You don't know this person, don't, no poster. And so let's take a look at her and I'm gonna have Brandon and Lena kind of just talk about, you know, what they like to see for submissions to come to their festival. Uh, and I'm gonna use this as a, as a sample. Let's go here. All right. And so, so uh, let me ask you real quick, you know, before I go here, uh, when you put together this submission, Linza, what were your thoughts about you know, you're, you're submitting to festivals, 
how did you, what was your strategy in submitting your film with your information? Um, so a lot of like the things that we do at FSU, we kind of worked with an advisor who kind of, she watches the movie, she gets our intake, and then she kind of gives her take back on like, okay, I feel like these festivals will work really, really well with you. And so I know for my film, we really wanted to target um, Black film festivals. I am of Haitian descent. I'm from Miami, or from South Florida, not Miami, but um, I'm from South Florida. And so when we were picking like the poster and the images, we really wanted to keep it as subjective to the character as possible. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah and, and tell me at, at your school, there's a district, there's a, this was, cause this was done intentionally and there's part of your training, they taught you, what, what was that again you shared with me? Yeah, so like uh, part of FSU's like, if you're part of the program, like one of the biggest things is uh, delivery. Mm -hmm. So after we make our film and we're done with editing, we spend a lot of time on like poster selection, like, we went through like five, six different posters, um, ideas. Um, they go through like our our bio. They give us notes on that. They give us notes on uh, the images that we choose in terms of the stills. Um, and so we have like a template of what items are required for film festivals um, because it's kind of universal. All film festivals kind of require some of the very similar things. Um, and then other festivals have very specific things that they may want additional. Um, but yeah, so that it's a whole process. Like we, uh, we get a lot of feedback. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And so as we look at this, we see the poster that's there, but I also like, I think because everyone makes, you know, you have production stills, right. That you're doing and adding those production stills here, just really a nice little piece that brings us more into the story without watching the story, which I think is, is very important. And then I love the director's biography because you know, and the statement, because I, you know, we read this stuff. And now I know you, uh, uh, set apart from your film, I know, I, know your, I know your backstory. I know something about you. And so normally when I see you and meet you, I say, I remember that. And we're going to have a conversation about what now I know, right? And so it's very, very important. I think this is for me that looking at this, the information was, you know, the statement, uh, the reason how she came about, you know, uh, creating this particular film, which is very similar to, to my story, believe it or not, after I read it again, when my dad passed, my stepmother, it, it was a complete split, no more, right? And so it was interesting. And then has the poster here, has the press kit, which is really, really cool that she has here as well, uh, uh, that goes more in detail about the cast and other information uh, about that, just a quick PDF, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, and, you know, so yeah, so so I thought this was pretty good. I, I, you know, what you guys think? I think she I think did it's a great well. job. Yeah, yeah. She, she's done it well. I think more um, the more information that you can give us helps us out a lot. Um, without even clicking on play to watch your screener, I already know I'm going to try to get some dancers inside of the inside of this uh, particular. Uh, programming. We're gonna look for for folks' uh, grief, maybe grief counselors, something like that. That's just off the top of the head. That's not without even hitting play. Without hitting play, right? <laughs> so she's telling the story. Yes. Right. A programmer is gonna think like that when they have something to read, when they have more information, more information than what we do need. And also, I do want to say, uh, not to to take up a lot of time, but that PDF press kit is very important because when we send out press kits. We could say, oh, we got one from Calypso, we got one from so and so, we got some, hey, we'll send those to media, and that pops up on their internet, or you know, on TV internet, or on newspaper outlets. And I think it's just best for for you as a filmmaker to get as much cloud as you can out there. Lena, do you have anything? And it, it's Lana. <laughs> Oh, Lana. Um, okay, well, Lana. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No worries. No worries. Um, yes, I mean, he pretty much said it all. You know, oftentimes, you know, people will skip over a lot of these categories. So you won't have a director biography. You won't have a director statement. And so it appears that, you know, 
all of that is there. And so that also communicates a certain level of professionalism. Um, it also communicates, you know, someone who is prepared and, you know, you don't have to go back and say, well, can you give me your credits and, you know, all of that. So it's, it's really, really good to go with your best foot forward. And it seems as if that's what you've done here. So well done. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and of course, the one thing that she has missing is a, a trailer. Every film, I don't care how short or long, should have a trailer because we're going to use that to promote this film, right, on our platform. So everyone should have, it could be 30 seconds, right, but have a trailer uh, that we can use uh, to move forward. I want to show you guys, can you guys see the press kit? You guys, okay, good. So this is for all the other filmmakers, just to kind of see how she created the press kit, because I... You know, I think this was really, really good. You know, it's a short film, student film, but it's their contact information, right? The director, uh, uh, you know, from the school, uh, the tagline is there, synopsis is there, all that stuff. Uh, above the line crew bios, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, this is really, really cool, right? Uh, you know, and uh, it goes on and on with that and probably got some below the line stuff. I, I don't know, but yeah. So it's really, really cool. And it breaks down everything to say, wow, this is, you know, we need to get them uh, at our festival, right? She, she's speaking this thing. None of us have seen the film yet. I haven't seen the film yet, right? She breaks this down. And so once again, the production stills again, uh, which is there. So, so just to let you guys know, create this kind of uh, uh, content for you with your submissions. Create this for your submission. And if you're creating a film, having this, is so great too, because you want to ask people certain questions about your film. And if you have a trailer and you have this PDF, this is gonna work. Oh, wow. This would get me interesting to have a second conversation because our times are very valuable and we can't talk to everybody. So you have to give me a reason to want to talk to you, call you back, right? This is outside of the festival if we're doing any kind of distribution work or, or work and things like this, but, but yeah, good job. And I, I appreciate you coming in. You know, and I saw that I called her you know, just to see what she's doing. But but this is a, a good job when it comes to, you know, looking at, as a filmmaker, how should we prepare ourselves to download you there? Uh, you know, brag on yourself, if I, if I could say that. Brag on yourself so that we would see how great you are, right? Uh, does anybody have any questions with this part of the submission process? Anybody have questions? Any filmmaker have a question? If so, unmute. No one. I, I do want to say this, uh, Tommy. Just looking at when you when you scroll through the um, her, the PDF, and if I would have scrolled through the PDF, I also would have got some some women directors, or some women folk, some key players that played that played the background. It looks like they were all women. Yes. So that looks like that was important as well. And I would I would I guess put the audience in there accordingly. Uh, and definitely do some women thing. And I also want to say, um, as you go forward and you get some selections, and that's for everybody that's on here, you get some official selections or any awards, there's a place in Film Freeway for you, for you to put that too. And I know our programmers will, sometimes I'll go straight to that, oh, they got awards click? Where did they go? Where, where was this film? Where, where else was this film shown or screened at? And I'll go look down in the very first place, I'm looking for ABFF or Pan African, I'm looking for it. Right. Absolutely. Uh, I'm like, oh, they there. Oh, let's go ahead and look at this. Um, yeah. But that's important as well. Like you said, brag on yourself. And, and this is the other thing. Remember this. Always let the programmers know this is a premiere. What I mean by that, if this is, if it's an international film, it might be a U.S. premiere. But if this is, if you submit it to a North Carolina film festival and you submit it to Charlotte, well, this will be your Charlotte premiere, right? If it's your first time in North, it's in North Carolina, always let them know that this is a premiere in their particular city or state. That is valuable, that you're premiering it at our festival, right? We feel valued because you're doing that. So if you can uh, write a note or put it in here, this would be a fest, you know, uh, when you submit it, make that change that this is would be our Charlotte premiere or North Carolina premiere, because we won't. If you premiere anywhere in Charlotte, you cannot premiere it at the Charlotte Black Film Festival. 
right? We must be a premier in Charlotte, right? So, so, but have that there, it just makes a lot of sense. And we, that's, how, that's our tagline for your film. We're speaking that about your film. So that's very, very important as well, okay? So now we get to the, to the real big part. You know, how do we judge your film? How do we judge your film? And so when we have a jury, um, there is a scorecard that we use. And, um, you know, so you would know how to prepare your film. There's a scorecard that every festival use. Some folks might use something different, but we use the film festival uh, scoring card. I don't know about you guys. Do you guys use this, the film freeway scoring card? We use that. Yeah. We use it too. Good, good, good. So, so this is the secret that you, no one's going to show you, <laughs> that we're showing you right now. And uh, hopefully this comes up here. <clears throat> Can everyone see that? So, so the very first thing that we're going to grade is the originality and creativity of your film. So can you guys talk about that real quick? Talk about the creativity and originality of the film and your perspective when you get these submissions, uh, kind of what you guys look for. I think you've already said it um, when you gave the example of kind of uh, the George, uh, getting 30 George Floyd films, um, you know, would that, uh, although it, it could be creative in, in and of itself, depending on how the framing is and, yes. and the story itself. However, uh, it may not be entirely original uh, because, you know, that is a theme that everybody has glommed on to for a particular year. Right. So, you know, and, and all of these categories are definitely um, subjective. They are. So uh, each one affects the other. And so, you know, it, it, you can't say as a programmer, well, this is what we're looking for to, at least I can't say as a programmer, this is what I'm looking for. I'm waiting to be told. And so, you know, after seeing so many films over the years that, you know, some films are going to jump out at you and, and others not so much. So I would say that, you know, for the original originality and creativity mark or uh, yeah, for that particular grade, I'm looking for something that is going to seem as if it's it's different, it's new, it's exciting, it's taking maybe something that's old and reinventing it, looking at it in a new way, or it's something that we haven't seen before. So that's uh, what I think about when I see that category. Yeah, 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 without a doubt, without a doubt. Let's talk about direction, Brandon. What, what do you see when you talk about direction uh, and you you get a film in? Uh, what what are you looking for at that particular line item? I think in direction, we're we're on our side. What we're looking for is, uh, as a director, did you did you pull that that great scene out? Did you get them? Did you evoke emotion in this particular scene? It might not be one scene. It might be several scenes. Did did they evoke? Did you evoke emotion that we could feel when we watched it? Was it sad? Was it was it something that was hilarious? Was it something that made me scared? Uh, or, you know, it held me, uh, it was a suspenseful. So we looked at certain scenes like, yo, they really directed that scene because that actor had to be in tune with that director to get to this per this particular part. And, it, and if you did, you know, and if it was great and it was superb, then we're gonna give you all the stars. If not, I'm like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Was it, was it directed well? Did it kind of get away from them near the end? Were, were they tired, did they run out of money? It's a lot of stuff to, to ask Got as you it. get into it. And you can see as we watch film and, and you have over 60 years of experience to combine uh, as far as us watching film and you kind of know when it kind of tapers off and yeah. did that person, did that director just like give it his or her all in every scene and throughout the film. So yeah. I think the direction of the film has to go um, a certain way uh, whether it's directing or actually telling that story and not, I'm not gonna say leave it in hanging because some uh, cliffhangers are great. Mm -hmm. When you drop us off, you're like, oh, we wanted some more of that. Oh, why y'all doing that? Uh, so I think w if you can get into a direction where it- Uh-oh, you're on mute. I'm sorry, I hit the button. When we get into a direction where it makes sense, and the story is flowing, then you got a winner. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and let's go to writing, because for writing for me, 
you know, one of the difficult things about programming films is you have to get out of yourself. I know what I like, but 90% of the people I talk to, they don't like what I like. So I, I need to make sure that I'm, 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 we're judging for the audience, right? Those folks, who, the attendees, so they can have a great experience at our festival. Uh, for writing for me, I want you to take me on a journey, on a ride, take me, take me somewhere, right? I'm, I'm watching this and I, I need the script to be, you know, to, to, to evoke emotions, uh, you know, or whether it's laughter or whatever it might be, but take me on the journey. I mean, what, what do you guys think about that part when it comes to writing? Um, for, 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 and for, this goes for all of these categories. I really hope that the filmmakers are students of the craft, meaning that, uh, you're following some of the kind of the, uh, the things that will lead and add to what we call, there's a category for this called production value. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting ahead just to make the point that you know, for each one of these categories, there are conversations, there are uh, kind of themes within each one. So if you're talking about something like, like writing, I'm looking for those things like, you know, does this script, is, it, is there writing on the nose? Does everybody know what that means? You know, if you're writing on the nose, it's not a good thing. Um, so, so that means that people are, are speaking what they're thinking and and mm -hmm. people never speak what they think so uh writing on the nose is something are the, does the script do that is the script well paced is there uh, an act one act two act three a beginning middle and end with the climax being at the midpoint you know so i hope i hope as you're making your films that you're aware of some of the uh the tools of the trade yeah. and so um if if you're not aware of that there are definitely uh resources uh online or or a lot of you have gone to university so i know you've trained in this um but for those of you who have not um and you know i you can go either way there there are plenty of places where you can learn the craft like no film school or any of the myriad of of online workshops and programs that you can avail yourself of but definitely know your craft because the jury does and they're having conversations specifically about those things <laughs> let's go to cinema photography because i think that uh you know probably one of the most obvious um either great or not so great will become through the cinematography, you know, what we see on the screen, you know, uh, the shot composition, uh, what that looks like, um, in focus, out of focus, you know what I mean? Uh, you, you know, and it doesn't have lighting here, but production value, but that's part, that's gonna be part of that. So, so very, very important, uh, especially if you have multiple scenes in different locations, if it's outside, if it's nighttime, whatever, uh, making sure that that particular scene uh, it is it, shot well, lit well, according to what you're trying to bring through your particular film. Um, uh, you guys have any horror, horror stories about cinema photography? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to play anyone because, you know, everyone has, you know, different budgets. But, you know, if it looks like a camcorder, it looks like a camcorder. I have to be very honest with you. And, and we're in we're in an age where you don't have to go through that anymore. Like we, we have something here in Wilmington called the 24 hour iPhone film festival. And even the iPhone folks are filming and it looks amazing. So I don't think we have like a, we shouldn't have to have an excuse to say, Hey, this is what I got. This is my budget or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in cinematography, what we look for is like, what do you want us to see? And we, how do we see what you're seeing? But we need a great value from it. Like, and, and I know it crosses the line with cinematography and the production value, mm -hmm. but you want the best, cleanest shots that you can get. And also, you know, if it's if it's twisted, if the camera's, you know, if that's the thing that you're looking for, or we, you know, 
they have scenes where the camera looks like you fell or something like that in real life, the p uh, point of view, then show us that. And I think that's where you get points at when we're looking at cinematography. But there, there's been horror stories where, you know, people head cut off, you know what I mean? It looked like this while I'm talking to you, you know? <laughs> and, and we've gotten that and, and people say, well, well, why are we getting picked? I said, well, camera angles are kind of messed up. Like, I don't, and, and once again, like Tommy said, we're programming for the audience. So we don't want the audience going, well, how did, what's going on? We don't even see what's going on. So we got a program for the audience. We want you to be able to sit back, click it. And if it looks like Netflix, then we own it. Now we're going to see, we're going to check the content as well. Yeah, yeah. Performance. Let's talk about performance. Um, we know that, you know, you guys on a short budget. And we know that you have cousin Ray Ray and Pookie them who always say they act up at home. So you thought they'd be great in your film. <laughs> and you know, so it depends, but, but we see that a lot in terms of performances. And, uh, and then we see these great performances with individuals who are skilled. Uh, and then you, you find someone who maybe their first film and you surprise how well they've done. So, so when you guys are, you know, looking at your story, telling your story. And a lot of times we have uh, filmmakers who they had one actor in one portion of the film, and then it was delayed because they couldn't finish it because the actor is no longer available. So, so it's really, I, we understand the challenge there, but yeah, you guys talk, talk about the acting performance value of the films that you guys get in, because that's going to relate directly to the audience. They're the ones speaking to the audience. And how important is that for you guys? I think that's a big problem here. I feel like the, I think I think we don't want to hurt people's feelings sometimes, and we will cast people who really won't be able to deliver the script that you've uh, written. Um, and I really want to encourage you to really uh, be uh, very protective over your work make sure you have people who can deliver the lines. And if you don't, then if you have one person, then right around them, right around the person you know is gonna give you a good performance um, instead of you know, having people you know, do something they really, they really can't do. Um, and you know, the, the other part or the other thing in, in the crafting of your material, just know that uh, when you uh, don't have people who are really good actors, it's even more important to show and not tell uh, because it all starts to break down the more dialogue you have. So that's, that's something um, you, know, you can think about as you're coming up with your scripts and screenplays. Good, 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 good. All right, let's talk about production value. You guys said some of that a little earlier, production value. And, and, and what we mean by that is, let's say if your movie's in a house and, and sometimes you can be real creative with this and everything can be shot in one house, but you can set certain rooms up as if it's a different location, right? You can be very creative if you're in one house. So how many locations, which also could be horrible for your film because now you got to set up lighting, cameras and all these different locations, the light has changed, you know what I mean? So. So, so production value, I think it, it, it is really good because that's part of your scenery. That's part of telling your story. Uh, but, but sometimes there are too many places and, and it kills uh, really the pacing, the structure. Sometimes it, you know, uh, but, but it's important. Uh, can you guys share about production value? Yeah, I, th I think production value for me is kind of a, it means the symphony of the elements. Mm -hmm. So for example, for some reason, one of the things that I see, and I know it's going to be, um, it's going to have maybe a low production value. If I see um, you, uh, a graphic for my company, say my company is in C media and I've spent a whole lot of time like flipping the thing, the, the logo and it's twirling and it's music and all of this. For some reason, every time I see that on one of our films, it's usually they've spent more time on that wow. than they have in crafting a good story. Wow. And so production value can be, 
you know, a, a not so well executed uh, logo for your company, which is not needed or necessary at the beginning of a, of a story. Uh, production, good production value means that, okay, in the example, if, if the submission that we saw, I think it was, is it Lands? Was it Lands or Lands? Lenza, Lenza. Lenza, Lenza's, Lenza's overall presentation, if that were a film, it had good production value, meaning that you know, there were no, there, the words, the words were not misspelled. There was a PDF with stills and all the things. It had all the things in all the right places. Same thing for a film. A production value means that the lighting's good, the cinematography yeah. is working together, you know, so that, and, and it looks as if somebody has um, an idea of craft, of film craft. And so when you watch, you know, when you watch a lot of independent films, you see that some people have a grasp of that and, and, and others do not. And so um, that's something that kind of, once again, if, if you're not used to that conversation around what production value is, that's something, it's one of those intrinsic um, terms that we use that will convey the the level of quality of a particular film so you want to make sure that people are saying that you have good production value so that mm -hmm. means good shots mm -hmm. good sound mm -hmm. good lighting mm -hmm. good graphics mm -hmm. in a nutshell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's talk about pacing so pacing is really interesting as well so uh i'm a i'm a drummer it, my other life, so I played drums a lot. And so there's always a feel, you know what I mean, to, to you know, any when I'm creating. And so how do you guys view patient? I, I, Brandon, how do you see, when I say patient, pacing, how do you interpret that when, you, when you're judging films? Sorry. Um, I think pacing is, is how the plot continues to go. When, I love the narrative feature parts. So I think the pacing is how the plot is going. And, and it's almost camera shots, boom, boom, camera shots, the dialogue. It is, it's almost a com complete comprehensive, like the production value. The pacing makes sense. Um, it has to make sense. If it's fast paced, then so should the camera shots and angles to be, pop, 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 pop. It, you should be taking my eyes and my breath away uh, all the time. Like, you might even have to put, uh, a, a, a warning up there saying, hey, you know, if you have epilepsy, this is going to move very fast. <laughs> or, you know, uh, you have to be very honest and transparent with it because, uh, and if it's slow, then the, the songs and the song selection and the mood and all that sh should be slow or medium tempo. And just like you said, um, and the reason I shook my head is because by day I am a radio programmer. So, oh. and, and so when I put music together, I'm not gonna go from you know an up tempo record into a ballad. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep it all up tempo till I get the commercial break, and maybe when I come back, I'll do two ballads in a row and get out of there. So I totally understand that, but pacing is very important. I, I want to use uh, I'm trying to think of the uh, the TV show. Very fast paced. The plot the plot is fast paced. The dialogue is fast paced. Uh, the camera work is fast paced. Scandal. I don't know if anybody ever watched Scandal. But it's very fast paced. That dialogue, I think when that first came out, I was like, yo, they talking fast, bro. Like, how are they getting all this information out at one time? And then it cuts to another scene and they're talking fast about a situation totally different than what the situation of uh, the actual beginning part of the plot was. And it's like two or three stories inside of one, but it's moving fast. And by the time you look up, 60 minutes is gone and you're like, oh, I'm gonna watch that next week. So it makes you want to come back. And so the pacing of that show is, is done really well. And you can tell when the pacing is uh, not so well. And I don't want to talk about a show bad. I'm not going to give it away. But sometimes I've watched a show on BT. Lord forgive me. I hope they give us some money someday. Right. Uh, <laughs> I've watched a show and there's several shows. But you can tell when the actors have gone off script. And I was like, oh, they're waiting for a line. What's going on? Did they? Why didn't they edit that out? Because it right, almost right, like they right. were waiting. It was like the, it, they lost their pace. It was like they were waiting for something. So 
uh, the pace, whether it's you know mid tempo or, or slow or or fast, upbeat, um, the pace has to be consistent throughout the film, and it had the camera angles and cinematography have to match. The mood has to match. The music has to match, and I think that's very important to your film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Elena, let's talk about structure, and I think and these are things that you know. I think there's some other major categories here. Then we have some that support some of those other things that are here. Uh, but, but you know, because when we get to the next one, I think that's one of the major problems I've seen in the film. But when we talk about structure, uh, what, what, what do you, how do you perceive that? I definitely, it's definitely related to writing. It's, it's related to, to pacing as well. Mm -hmm. um, but depending on the genre that you're in, the structure is going to be different. And so there are kind of um, expectations that audiences have for different types of films and different types of genres. So structure um, is something that aligns itself to kind of uh, a very, you know, um, general conversation about, about genre. Uh, but once again, um, you know, we're still in a three act structure mm -hmm. uh, world, even though, you know, there are people and 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 discussions about turning a three act structure on its end to do different things. At the end of the day, it's still a three act structure so that uh, audiences in terms of having a conversation about how uh, you get from the beginning to the end that there are you know, there are patterns to that. And so the question becomes, are or is the filmmaker adhering to some of the patterns of, of structure? Um, am I, you know, within the first uh, uh, several pages getting to the uh, catalyst that's then going to take things into act two? Am I getting um, exhaustion, you know, during act two, is act two like really long? So I, it loses my attention at, at various points uh, or is it, have they been able to craft something that still goes at a particular pace at a, at a particular clip? And then, you know, towards the very end, how do you resolve all that? How does that, how does that all come together? And I, am, am I satisfied with you know, how, how it ends. So structure, I think, deals with all of that. And, um, and like I said, it's related to some of those other categories. Uh, but the difference is I, I find that structure is more aligned with the genre. And, and, and there are some structure templates online where it kind of breaks down the three acts and it kind of shows you in between and, and shows you this little, little, little arc and it's kind of where you need to be. And so, so you guys can go online and see some of those uh, uh, structured templates or images that they have that details that even more. Uh, probably out of all of the, uh, these items, uh, the one things that have come into us that really was, was a, just a, a, a no was the sound. You know, audio is just as important as the video. And sometimes you have audio where it's in one part of the film, there's a hiss noise, the other part is clean. So, so, so variety of different sounds or crackling noise, you know, sound has to be so clean. You have to get somebody who understands sound, how to mix sound. Um, the music hasn't been as bad. I mean, the music has been good, we enjoy, but this, it's the sound quality of capturing your actors and then sound that's in your film that shouldn't be there. You know, sounds is coming from, I don't know where it's coming from, but other kind of sounds, whether it's your air conditioner or something that's coming in and it just kills, uh, uh, over uh, compensates for even the, the actors, you know? So uh, what do you guys think about the sound and music part of, of that? And we do have a, a sound category. We do have a, a score category that we have as well, but, uh, but listen to the sound. Uh, what kind of issues have you guys ran into? Um, I gotta say that that you know, in I'm I'm a practitioner, so I'm a television producer and a filmmaker, and um, in the years that I've worked, there there was a saying, and the saying is, you can have bad picture, but you cannot have bad bad sound. My goodness, you cannot have bad bad sound. Uh, bad picture. There are ways. There are things that you can do about that. 
Right. Once you mess up the sound, there's no fixing that. And so you you have to kind of pay the extra dollars for that for that uh, location sound person who's going to be able to capture um, the best the best the highest quality quality of sound. So if you're thinking about where to put your production dollars, uh, definitely think about putting it uh, towards a sound recordist. I, I agree with Lana. I totally agree with her. Um, I've seen where same scene in dialogue between two people and the sound was different for each person. Yes. Like one person sounded super clear and the other person sounded like they were like, oh, oh, oh. I was like, oh my goodness. And I had the programmer stop the film and was like, we're not going to watch this. <laughs> we, we just, we're not even going to watch it. And I'm like, oh, oh man. So it's super important. You, if you got a programmer that'll stop the film, you know, like we, we're not even gonna watch this. If it's gonna be like this for the rest of the film, we're not gonna watch it. Because what's happening is, once again, like we were saying, I think throughout this entire thing, we're programming for our audience. Our audience is gonna think the same thing while they're listening. I'm like, what? Why does it sound like this and not sound like that? So I'm going over the speakers in here. Um, and so it's that is super important. Like Ron yeah. said, like when they have kind of bad quality, uh, 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 screening, but that sound is a, is a go-to. Yeah, and, and new filmmakers the, the flip that usually. Usually, they want the best picture, you know, and and the sound is an afterthought. Mm -hmm. And it's also so so that very way of thinking is the thing. When we see that and hear that, we know it's a new person. And you never want somebody to know. You never want a programmer to look at your work and say, "Oh, this must be a new person." You know, so really, really take that into consideration. Um, and and so when we grade these, we get an average total that comes here, right? We get an average total, and that scored. Uh, you know, the, the judges score. If they have any comments about that, uh, sometimes films are misplaced. Uh, it, it could be an international film, and they have it in short films. Uh, it could be, you know, so so sometimes films are misplaced. But comments here, sometimes information is missing. So we can do a comment here, click, sit, submit it to the filmmaker, and that can happen. Once this is done, that person is judging your film is going to say, we pass on this film. This is not, you know, we're going to pass on it. We recommend it uh, for official selection. This, this is so good. It's award worthy, right? Are we the place to say maybe? I mean, I'm not for sure if, if this, I recommend this. It's not too bad for me to pass. I'm just not sure. So that's there. And so that particular jury, when they come together as a group, then they determine if that's one that will make it uh, uh, into the festival uh, or not. Look, looking at that, looking at all these issues and the story behind it. And then for us, too, we're looking at, is this something that we can create a, a panel discussion around? So that, that helps, too, because the topic is so important, right, that we need to have a discussion around this for the community then that, that gives us a little bit as well. Any questions about the scoring card? Or from one of our panelists, any questions about their festival, what they do, uh, the scoring piece? I got a question. Yes. Do you ever as a panel wanna see the script? The actual shooting script? Only for us, we don't because we, we don't do a script writing competition or anything like that. So we don't want we, we don't have time to read no script. So we don't, I don't want to see the script. What about you guys? We don't want to see the script either. We we don't do any type of screenwriting uh, contest or or anything. Yeah, we don't. We want the final product. But since we're saying that, I don't know. Maybe this could be a situation where we all three get together and maybe do something separate of our festivals about screenwriting. I don't know, but um, as of right now in, in the festival, we just want to see the final product. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and guys, remember this when you have your script, because your script is your Bible. I call it that. And, and you never want to submit your script unsolicited, right? So, so you know, your script is yours. If, if I don't ask for it, your script, that is. You can do some other things, but your script is yours. And so... Never forget, I was at ABFF, and this guy stopped talking to Spike with this other guy. And this guy ran to his car, ran, and wanted to give his thick script to Spike Lee. Wanted to hand it to him, right? And uh, 
you know, and so he walked, he was outside, he walked away and Spike threw it right in the trash, Ooh. right? Because you, you have to understand something. In many cases, there's nothing new under the sun. And if you're already in production, you're creating content, you're doing things. If I take your script and something I'm doing is similar to something you wrote, now you're trying to sue me, say, I took your idea. So, so you know, we, when you think about that, but there are script writing competitions that I'm sure they have a different uh, uh, rules and conflict, conflict of interest, those kind of things they have where they won't, you know, that is yours uh, and, and is yours. But yeah, so this this is really, really good. So uh, no questions are there, we'll come out of that. Uh, let me come out of the share. Now, so, so hopefully, and I think we missed someone who did not introduce themselves. Who did not, raise your hand if you did not introduce yourself. If you did not, okay, yes. Go ahead and unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Hi. <clears throat> and where, tell us where you're from and what part of the film industry are you in? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, first of all, I'm now in Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm moving to Charlotte uh, in uh, July. So oh. I'm starting to, uh, trying to start the connections before. Um, I'm not currently in the industry, but I'm looking forward to be working on a documentary film about the Tunisian revolution that I will be uh, doing in Tunisia. And I will I'll be in the, the coming few years. And uh, there is an old idea for a feature film that I want to also start working on that I wrote the script and I lost it. And I want to write it again and and do it. Awesome. And so I, I'm hoping to network and, and start volunteering for other people's projects to get my skills on a level to start my own projects. That, that's awesome. And I always say the best, one of the best ways to learn is to serve, you know. And, and I love working with people that serve. That, that's the bottom line. I, I love working with people that serve and uh, not just here's my project, y'all support me, and then they disappear. No, serve on somebody else's project. Let, let's, get, let's get the content done. Uh, great, great. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, anybody have any questions, more questions for our panelists? I, uh, I won't hold them unless they want to. Okay, yes, go ahead, Gino. Hi, I was wondering, do all festivals uh, accept music videos that have a storytelling element to it? And if so, what category is it for for your festival? Well, we do accept music videos. And so it would be a music video just with that storytelling element. So a lot of our music videos have that. And, and actually, those have been some of the best music videos I've seen. You know what I mean? That does have that storytelling element. It's not drawn out, though. It's not a short film, but it's this music video that's there. So it would still go into music video for us. We don't have a category called music video, but we accept music videos uh, and we would put that under narrative. And since you're from the South, I would say Southern narrative. Hey everybody, um, we, can We accept can music videos too, I'm sorry. Hold on one second, go ahead and reply, Brandon. I said we accept music videos as well um, for the North Carolina Black Film Festival. Okay. And we have a music video uh, portion. Good. So if you guys can use the uh, raised hand, let me see, where is it at? That way I can, okay, good, good. Okay, Mr. Zoom user, go ahead. Brandon, uh, you gave the dates of March 25th and 27th, I believe, for your film festival. Is that this year, next year, or when? That is this year, this year. a month from tomorrow, March 25th will, to the 27th. I will be there. Yeah. Come on to the beach. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to support you. So... Uh, I'm going to send out, give me your information so I can send it out to everybody who attended this, everybody who's there to our database. And we're going to send out, we want to come down there in March, right? Nope. So we want to support you, support that festival uh, in March. Ours is not until June the 23rd through the 26th. Oh, we're uh, here, coming. <laughs> but we're coming. Yeah, we're going to come down. We're going to get people together and come down. Yes, let's, let's do that. And it might be, that's so close. That might be an ideal situation. If we can come together and get some things done. Do it at the festival. You know what I mean? That, yeah. that would be good. So anybody want to go to Wilmington, let me know. <laughs> good, good. Uh, do you have a link that we can place in there as well? 
Yeah, I can put it in. In the chat, I'll put it in the chat. Good. Right, thank you, Tony. Tony just uh, did something that I definitely would use. Okay, Ms. Dixon. Hey, everybody. Um, hey, Lana. Hey. My name is uh, Tyra Dixon. I'm a filmmaker and a photographer here in Durham and a um, friend of Lana's. So we're part of the uh, Haytap Film uh, Black Filmmakers Collective. Um, this has been a good discussion so far. So thank you for your information. Thank you. Y'all got it going on. Where you from, Durham? Y'all got it going on up in Durham. Let me let me find <laughs> out. <laughs> no. Oh, I am available to uh, work on projects now. I, um, yeah. Awesome. I'm, I've just started uh, going back full time to uh, filmmaking. So. Oh, good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. and there's there's people all over the place too who's looking for folks, and so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. And I saw another hand. Someone set their hand up. My hand raised, Tommy. Um, I just wanted to ask, was I was trying to put something in the chat and it doesn't seem like we're able to type into chat. We can only send information to you. I yeah, just wanted to make sure we put our information in the chat so we can connect with one another. Wait a minute, you, you, can, you can only do it to me? You can't do it to everybody? Yeah, that okay. just happened to me too. Yeah. Okay, so, so send it to me and then I'll send it to everybody. Okay. Okay, here it is right here. Let me see if this let me see if this works. Um, and I also wanted to ask um, Oops, Brandon. Brandon, is there a host hotel for the film trustee? As of right now, it's Hampton Inn Medical Park. If I'm telling you correct, um, there's Hampton Inn Medical Park. I think that's 72 a night right now. Oh, and wow. the other would be Holiday Inn Express Medical Park. Which is, is I, think, I think it's about 79. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know why that's doing that. Okay. So so you're gonna send it to me. Everybody send everything, email me, and then I'll send out this list. And cool. I'm gonna save the chat as well. Okay, there we go. Good, good. Anyone else? Any other questions? So, so I think I'm give you guys, I'm gonna break this up into two separate rooms. Uh, I know my panelists, if you guys gotta leave, I mean, I just really appreciate you guys. Uh, we, need, we need to follow back up, but if you wanna be part of the networking, I'm gonna split this up in two rooms where we can really have a discussion, really network, exchange information. You know, this is about collaboration where you guys can really work together and also support what you guys are doing. You know what I mean? That, that's what it's about. If you're doing anything in North Carolina, we're here to support the independent filmmaker. That's why we're here. So from uh, Wilmington to Raleigh, Durham to Charlotte, North Carolina. So uh, that's why we're here. So if anybody doesn't have any more questions, I'm going to put you guys into a breakout room, right? Two separate rooms where you guys can have conversation, get to know each other. Um, can I just say one thing, Tommy? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Matter of fact, I want you guys to close out. Yeah, I want you guys to close out. Yes, say something. Yes, a uh, couple of things. One is um, we do so. I, so part of Haiti Film is it's both the Haiti Heritage Film Festival and it's also year-round screenings and workshops. So right now the the website is under construction. Uh, under construction, yes. <laughs> um, I need another cup of coffee. <laughs> it's under construction. And so uh, you'll be seeing information about uh, what we call Hey Thai Film. Also, I'm building out on the platform um, a database of Black filmmakers in the state so that if production companies are looking to hire, they'll be able to go there and see your names. And so uh, that's, that's in the works. And also there's Hey Thai Film Next Level series that started last September. It runs through June. Every second weekend of every month, we've, we're screening two films, either online or at Hey Thai and online. So uh, check out the offerings at Hey Thai Film Fest. I'm sorry, Hey Thai Film Fest.org. Good. And also, also, you know, if you want to reach out to me, uh, uh, Landon, I, I got your email. You know, I'm going to follow up with you if you're still here. Um, and if so, reach out to me at 
uh, film at heytai.org. Can you type that? I think I changed the settings. Can you type that in the chat? Okay. Yeah, we'll I think that. I think I got it fixed. Uh, that's that's great. And we're also doing a daily base as well. That'll be done April first for for African American film. Well, it's a you can for filmmakers, independent filmmakers, and you can click African American filmmakers, and you'll get that daily base as well. Well, maybe we need to, uh, maybe I need to just have your database on our site. So if you could send me that information. Yeah, yeah. Because um, we would support it because I'm a tech guy, so I do all things tech. So yeah, we, yeah. we could do that, partner on that. That would be awesome. Okay. Same here. All right. Did you guys Thank get it? Is it coming? To, did you guys see the chat now? Is it working? Or, good, yes, good, it's good. working. Good, good, it's good. It's working. And, and if you could go and pitch your, for, uh, your uh, North Carolina Black Film Festival, put your information there again so they can get that. Great, 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 great. Awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to put you guys in the room and uh, give you, how much time do you need to, to, to meet with six people? Minute. How many? <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay. Here we go. You guys should be able to see it where you click it and go into the room. There we go. Awesome. 